It was warm. I remember that. Unusually warm. And it was a perfect day for baseball. So I'm Al Michaels. Welcome to game three. October in the Bay Area is the best. Bright sunshine, ice blue sky, light breeze, perfect. And we come on the air and uh, I welcomed everybody and then uh, brought Tim McCarver in. Let me turn out to Tim McCarver and you know, Tim, we talked in game one. And what Tim was going to do is narrate highlights from the previous game. Hey, welcome to Candlestick Park, guys. Upper deck, straight up from the foul pole, top row, as far as you can go. We got there when the gates opened and we headed up to our seats. It's in the upper deck, center field. I do this every time there's no wind. I say this. Hey, earthquake weather, right? There was a couple in front of us from Arizona, and they said, uh, yeah, we're a little nervous being here and hearing about earthquakes. And I said, don't worry about it. Odds of us having an earthquake are not going to happen. A throw from Will Clark. We were on the air for four minutes. And at 5.04, uh, we were off the air for a while. And he fails to get Dave Parker at second base, so the Oakland A's take... Take... Hang on, we're having an earthquake. I really thought it was the fans just, you know, just banging their feet on the floor and on the top of the dugout, and I went, oh man, that's where it's going to be. Could we have been pitched out of the booth? Could the upper deck have collapsed? Those were the thoughts that made your heart sink and your throat go into your heart later on. All of a sudden, the press box started to shake uncontrollably. There was this enormous roar, and it sounded like a a flight of major military bombers had flown over. I was working for ESPN. Chris Berman and I, we were relegated to the upper deck, uh, right behind home plate. The top of the stadium seemed to move. And the ground was shaking, man. All of a sudden, there's a big rumble. And the little tables, and the, the, the little monitors are shaking around. The screech was so loud, and it felt like a train was coming through the door. And I said, earthquake, and auxiliary lights flipped on, and I was gone. There has been, as you may know by now, a rather severe earthquake measuring 6.5 on the Richter scale in San Francisco. You could physically see like a big wave come rolling through. I'm on the left field line. I felt like I stepped in a hole, a big one and looked around, I couldn't believe there'd be a hole that big in the outfield. Somebody later asked me how long did it last, and I said long enough to start a Hail Mary, not long enough to finish it. But it may be 15 seconds. Well, folks, that's the greatest open in the history of television, bar none. I thought maybe this was a localized quake and hadn't done any damage, and it wasn't until uh, much, much later that I knew the extent of what had taken place. The whole upper deck went. Bubba boom, bubba boom, bubba boom. And if it did it again, I was gonna, my pants. Uh, the upper deck shook a lot. I was sitting in my chair and it actually knocked me forward. And it stopped. And out of 53,000 fans, 50,000 of them got up and cheered. Yeah. California, earthquake, yeah. Except section 53, they all left. Well, what a bunch of babies, man, let's go. Let's play the game. We were I was up in the top row, the last seat, and it was ugly. I've never felt more unsecure in my life. My seat was on an expansion joint, and so when I turned around, the seat was cracked. I could see out to the bay, and I could actually see the Bay Bridge. In this ballpark, there are joints that come together and there were multiple expansion joints that did exactly what it was supposed to do. My brother-in-law was in the upper deck, and he got up to go get a hot dog. And when he came back, there was a big boulder sitting in his seat that would have crushed him if, if in fact, he was sitting in the seat at the time. I can't believe that. Not yeah, we're we're out. Out. Then electricity went out, and we really had no communication. We didn't know except for people coming and saying the bridge had collapsed, the fires in the city, and you're scared to death. 
It is the Oakland Bay Bridge from northern uh, from San Francisco, basically the center of town over towards Oakland. That is the bridge that has apparently sustained damage. Freeway has collapsed where? Immediately, you felt a, a sense of responsibility that we have to get on the air. And I would say within about 15 minutes, we were live on the air, Bob Lee hosting our coverage. Everyone else couldn't function. We had a generator, which by the way, the police outpost, and they had their own trailer right next to us in Wright Center Field, was able to tap in with us. So we felt in a small way later on finding out we were helping out the area. Now, they, we, they, they haven't made any announcements inside further. No, no, right now. no, no. They haven't made any. I, I think they're. Everybody's just scrambling right now. Uh, we had two phone lines in our production truck. We gave one to the San Francisco Police Department because they didn't have any communications, and we kept one to coordinate. My ops producer came into the truck. And he was like, "There's a chance we may have to give up the truck because they they may resume the World Series." And I just said, "Take a look at that monitor up there. Do you see that bridge?" I go, "They're not playing baseball here tonight." Nobody's getting in the truck. Let's just keep doing our coverage. And we, we are feeling a shock right now. And that shaking in your picture is being... We did a couple of subliminal things. First, we pulled the bases off the infield. Why would you be pulling off the bases if you're not playing? I remember the dashing figure of Commander Nelson on the field taking control of the situation. He said, Commissioner, we have to cancel this game. He said, we got 53,000 people here, and we got to get them out. I said, Commander, it's just been canceled. That's done. We have a power failure, therefore the game will be postponed. We ask that you leave in an orderly fashion. I think everybody pretty much had the same idea. OK, let's get our families out the stands. Let's get them on the field. And we need to exit this stadium as soon as possible. The first reports that we got were from the scanners of the police officers, cars on the field. You know, the Bay Bridge is down, and we thought, what? The Bay Bridge is down. Oh, my god, look at that. Um, the freeway has just completely collapsed. And it, it took us six hours to get from the San Francisco side back to the Oakland side. It was surreal because there were like no rules on the road at that point. It was gridlock. There were people going, driving across medians, going the wrong way on exit ramps. It was chaos. Prepare yourselves. Prepare for aftershocks. Prepare for three days of no services. You got 90 minutes of light left. You better make use of your time. It is becoming very clear to all of us in Major League Baseball that our issue is really uh, a modest one in light of the great tragedy that's hit this area. I'm told that I have to have a press conference and it has to be a big event because, of course, canceling the World Series or even postponing it's a big deal. To have candlelight be the source of whatever illumination there would be in a very big room it was out of some bizarre movie. Since we're in a hotel without power and without telephones, it's very hard for us to know what is going on in this community. And so we won't. Wait. And a couple hours later, I get a call from George Steinbrenner. And he says to me, Commissioner, I'm furious at you. I said, Why, George? He said, Because you look like a bum. He said, You shouldn't be on television ever, ever. Without a coat and tie, he said, you, sh you really look awful. Dave Stewart, he goes and watches the police, brings coffee and donuts to try to help and see if he can do something. Just seeing if I could be of help to try to rally different parts of our community, put together blankets and food and clothing um, for the people that were working, the people that were displaced from their homes. Tony, you wanted to keep the team really sharp, and we actually flew to Arizona for a few days to work out when a giant stayed in the Bay Area. We felt an obligation to make sure we did everything we could to keep the edge. The effect of it on us was very positive because we had been inundated with grief. We were having to answer questions like, do you think you guys should really be practicing and focusing on a World Series when 
right down the street, they're pulling bodies out of the rubble. I mean, how, how do you answer that? The Giants thought that we would be better off, uh, you know, staying in the Bay Area and, and assisting any way possible we could in the community. And I, I personally agreed with that. And there was a lot going on in the Bay Area at that time. I thought it was a good way to get our minds back and focused on what we needed to do, which is get ready to play and get ready to win the World Series. Yes, he's there in time, and the A's are the world champions. We're excited in the moment, um, but we're also in memory of what took place. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.